Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking about another great package recently released from Rampant Design Tools, and I'm talking about the Rampant Design Tools Flare Essentials Pack. Now in this lesson, we're gonna talk about getting up and running with them inside of Avid Media Composer, because there are a few things that you need to know when working with these great elements. Now, something that I do wanna point out right off the bat, is that we're gonna be working in an HD project, but these elements are 4K elements, and we can work with them in our HD timeline, and with the power of Media Composer's FrameFlex, we have the ability to get in and manipulate the frame exactly the way that we need it, based on the shots that we're working on, to get just the look that we're looking for. All right, now a couple of things I wanna talk about before we get started with the tutorial. The first is that if you're new to Rampant Design Tools and you're really not sure if these elements are right for you, what I encourage you to do is to head on over to 4kfree.com. Sign up for the Rampant Design Tools newsletter and you're gonna get access to a ton, over 100 Rampant Design Tools elements that you'll be able to download absolutely free for you to work with in your projects, which is really gonna give you a feel for how great these elements are. And again, it doesn't cost you a penny. That's 4kfree.com, head on over now and sign up. You'll get the newsletter and you'll get emails for great deals on Rampant Design Tools products. Now, the other thing that I wanna remind you of is that if you don't know this already, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out the Rampant Previewer app that you can download on the Apple App Store. This preview app is gonna let you get in and get a preview of all of these great elements right on your iOS device without having to go through each element manually on your computer. This fantastic tool is absolutely free and it's under 10 megabytes. You'll have this app downloaded in no time and you'll be able to check out any one of the Rampant Design Tools elements anywhere that Wi-Fi is available. All right, so let's get started taking a look at the Flare Essentials Pack from Rampant Design Tools. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to Command and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And as you can see, I have a couple of sequences here set to go. I have one that's gonna show us how we're gonna get in and use the fantastic Flare transitions that come as part of this pack. And what we're also gonna do is we're going to add a lens flare over top of this title treatment that I've come up with for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Kev, you spelled judgment wrong. Well, I didn't because I'm Canadian and in Canada, we actually spelled judgment with an E. Okay, so let's get in and let's pick an element to work with. We're gonna start with our Terminator 2 Judgment Day text treatment and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna to navigate to the source browser. We're not gonna import media because we are talking about larger than HD footage here. So I wanna to come to the source browser. Let me just navigate to my Rampant Design Tools elements here. And let's come into the Natural Flares folder. Now, to be honest, there are so many great elements in here, but to be honest, calling them one, two, three doesn't really help me. And many editors think they'd have to bring all these clips in to then double click on each one to get an idea of what these flares are so you can pick out the one that's right for the project that you're working on. But we actually don't need to do that inside of the source browser. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate down to frame view. And once I turn frame view on, you'll see that we now get a frame of each one of the clips that's in this folder. Now, one thing that I love about the source browser is the fact that if those thumbnails are a little bit small, I can actually increase the size of them just like that. And this does give us a bit of a preview, but if I wanted a real preview of this, all I have to do is mouse over one of these elements. And as soon as I do, what Media Composer is going to do is it's actually going to scrub through this element, okay? And you'll see that I can actually choose any one of these elements and Media Composer is just going to scrub through it for me. This is a fantastic way to get a quick preview of exactly what this element looks like. Now, to be honest, I think I'm just gonna pick this one. I kinda like the way it looks like the lens is a little bit dirty. So I'm gonna link to this clip and what I'm also gonna do here is I'm just gonna pick out a transition. Now, you'll see that we can actually do the exact same thing here. I really like this transition. I think I'm gonna select that one. I'm gonna link to that one for the second example that we're going to use. Now, many people think, well, that's fantastic. Let's just double click and start working with this flare. But we don't wanna do that because there's a step that we have to take in between to make sure this flare is looking exactly the way that we need it to, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the link to clip and I'm gonna head up to the source settings. 
Now, you're gonna notice that the aspect ratio of the lens flare is very different than the aspect ratio of the current frame. You can actually see that if I was to bring this a little bit closer to our timeline window or the sequence window, very different aspect ratio. This is a 2.37 to one aspect as opposed to the 16 by nine aspect ratio of our canvas. So what's actually happening to the clip here is that it's being squashed down to fit inside this frame. It's being squashed basically vertically and being or squ squashed horizontally and stretched vertically to fit inside the frame. And that is not what we want. We want these elements to look exactly the way that they were shot. Well, what we need to do is we need to tell the frame flex window that the frame size that we want to use is actually a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And how we do that is not with the image size. The image size is the image size. That's never going to change. But our frame flex window can change. And what we want to do is tell Media Composer that the frame flex window we need to be 16 by 9 to match the aspect of the clip or the timeline that we're going to be dropping this into. Now, this window now represents our frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the frame flex window over so we get all that lens flare in the shot. And you'll see that I get a preview that updates in the bottom half of the frame flex window to give us a preview of what this is going to look like. And I can drag through to actually see what the flare is going to be doing at different parts of the shot. Okay. I could even zoom in if I wanted to and reposition it. But I think I'm just going to leave that to be the actual size of the frame here. Okay, or at least pretty close. So I'm gonna get this back over more or less to the left side of the screen so we get as much of the flare as possible. And once I'm satisfied with this, I can say apply and you'll notice immediately inside of the preview window that image update to represent what we're seeing as far as the flare goes. And I can now simply say okay. Now what's important to keep in mind when working with elements like these ramp and design tools elements inside a Media Composer is that it's very difficult for us to work with them natively because Media Composer doesn't natively support transfer modes or blending modes as they're more commonly referred to as. But the great thing is chances are you already have a plugin pack that has an effect that you're going to be able to use to work with these elements. And the one that we're going to use in this lesson is from Boris Continuum Complete, but you can find these effects inside of Boris Continuum Complete and inside of other applications or pa plugin packages like Generate Sapphire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this element and I'm going to create a new layer, Command or Control and Y, and I'm going to drop this great looking flare right on that layer right there. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to head to the Effects Palette and I'm going to head to the BCC Key and Blend section to the Composite Effect. And I'm just going to grab and drag the composite effect down onto the shot. Now you'll see right away, we get a bit of a different look that's a little bit unexpected because by default, the blend or apply mode that's chosen is hard light. And I don't want hard light. I always like to use the additive blend mode. And you'll see that that really gives us a very cool look. Now, one thing that I want to point out about these elements is the fact that they are extremely flexible. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that this is an excellent looking flare, but really, you know, I'm kind of going for more of a blue type flare. So maybe I should go and look for a blue looking lens flare, but I don't want to look for a blue looking lens flare. I want this lens flare to be blue. So how do we go about getting in and making this adjustment? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to undo what I just did so that I can take the effect that we've applied and I'm just going to drop it into my bin because I'm going to want to get quick access to that in just a second. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that effect and I'm going to head to another effect inside of Boris Continuum Complete inside the color and tone section and I'm going to use the BCC color balance effect. Now keep in mind that because this element is a QuickTime file or an imported or transcoded file, I didn't transcode it, but you get where I'm going with this, we can get in and manipulate it much like we would any other standard clip inside a Media Composer. So watch this. I'm going to step into effects mode, shift and wise my shortcut. You can always find effects mode right here at the top of your timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an adjustment to this flare, not to make it green, but to make it blue. So what I've now basically just done is created two different versions of this lens flare. Conceivably, I could start getting in and making all of these different color presets for this one flare to create one flare, two flares, five, 10, 15, 20 different flares, as many different color palette swatches that I want to have. 
And because I took that effect and dragged it and dropped it into my bin, all I need to do is to take it, hold Option or Alt on the keyboard to drop it onto the shot, and now we have a blue lens flare instead of an orange lens flare. So you can see the flexibility of these elements inside of Media Composer. Not only do they look great, but they're super simple to manipulate to give you a different look. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come to my Waterfalls for Transition, and I'm just gonna grab my Flare Transition because we're gonna wanna make sure we check out those source settings. You'll see this is a 1.90 to one lens flare. Again, exactly the same process, 16 by nine. I'm actually very happy with the way that that looks. I'm gonna say, okay. Let's double click on our shot. And what I wanna find is the point in the shot right about there where the flare is the brightest. I'm gonna mark that as an endpoint. We're gonna create a new video layer again, Command or Control Y. I'm gonna drop this element right at the edit, and then I'm going to come back and I'm gonna trim it back as far as it will go, okay? Let's now take our composite effect, let's drag it and drop it onto that natural flare, and when I come back now, you'll see that it does the transition. Now you're gonna notice that we get a little bit of a color difference there, okay? Now that would be because if I come into remove the effect, you'll see that the black is not exactly 100% black. So what we could do if we wanted to is we could get in just do a little bit of color correction to the shot because again, it's a quick time clip just like any other clip. Or I think what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually just gonna get in and I'm going to put a fade at the top and bottom. Let's give it a 12 frame fade here, give it a 12 frame fade at the end, and then what's gonna happen when we come back and we hit play is that this shot is gonna do a perfect transition from one shot to the next. So I hope this lesson has shown you not only are these fantastic elements to work with inside a Media Composer, but you can get in and with a little bit of forward thinking, you can take one great looking element and turn it into many great looking elements in no time flat. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com.